Welcome to this presentation, uh, medication infusions for TXA and oxytocin on our ambulance. So the first medication we're going to cover is transoxemic acid. So with this here, we are going to be switching from doing a 10 ml slow syringe push to infusing it with a 100 cc saline bed. So indications for using TXA is we have major trauma with or without signs of shock within three hours of injury. So if you're wondering when we should be using TXA in the CareMap F01 major trauma, uh, table B, it shows signs, symptoms, and class of hemorrhagic shock, where it actually gives you recommendations of patient situations where you would want to either consider or just go ahead and give TXA. So if you're looking for a reference for when to give TXA, that would be the place to look. The other reason we want to give TXA is a new addition is postpartum hemorrhage. So with that, um, with postpartum hemorrhage, it also recommends giving oxytocin infusion. So one thing to note is that you can start your oxytocin infusion in one line. You'll need to start your TXA infusion in another line or give one and then the other. Uh, they are compatible in the line together, but what happens is if you piggyback your TXA onto your oxytocin line, it's actually been found in studies that it will dilute the TXA too much and then that will make it ineffective. So you wanna do one line or one med at a time. So like I said, in the new care map here, uh, update in care map in D08 postpartum hemorrhage, it does say consider transexamic acid in there after an oxytocin infusion. So kind of make your decision which medication you wanna give, or if you wanna give both at the same time, you're gonna to need to do two separate IVs. So we don't give TXA if someone's allergic to it. That's pretty much the only contraindication at this time. So for dosing here, so 12 years and older, we're going to give one gram. So that's going to equal 10 mLs of TXA. And then for pediatric patients, so from 72 hours up to 12 years of age, it's going to be a weight-based dose for our med administration. So with this here, so the big thing is we want to make sure that we don't give this medication too fast because it has been shown to cause hypotension if it's given as a rapid bolus. So this is the new update that was done recently to this medication profile is we're going to mix one gram. So it'll be 10 mLs of, I, of uh, TXA into 100 ml IV fluid and infuse this over 10 minutes. So we're going to be getting access to these bags for our ambulances. So to prepare the TXA infusion, we're gonna get our supplies together. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our 100 ml saline solution bag. We're gonna get our TXA vial. So we may need one or two vials, depending on how much we want to give, especially a pediatric patient. We're gonna need our blunt needle syringe to drop the medication and put it into the bag. We're gonna need the 10 cc syringe. Obviously we're gonna need to draw our medications into something and an alcohol swab. So we're going to calculate the dose for our medications as per M28. So like I said before, if they're over 12 years of age, we just give them one gram, which is 10 mLs. And if they're less than 12 and more than 72 hours, we're going to do a weight-based dose. So like I said before, concentration TXA is 500 milligrams per 5 mLs. Or if you want to do the math, it's 100 milligrams per mL. So to prepare your TXA infusion, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our alcohol swab, we're gonna take the injection port of the 100 cc bag, and we're gonna make sure we clean it properly to make sure that we don't introduce any infection or any debris into the bag. Then we're gonna take our medication and we are gonna inject it into the port of the IV bag. Now it's very important when you put the needle in there that you go straight to make sure that we don't actually neck the side or actually pierce the actual side of the port. Then we're gonna push our 10 cc's into the bag and once that's done, we're gonna mix it up by shaking it back and forth like you see here, and then we are good to go. So to calculate the drip rate for the IV fluid, there is a formula. So the first thing we wanna do is calculate the total volume in ML. So because we're giving an adult dose of TXA, we have 100 cc's of saline and 10 ml of TXA. So our total dose is 110 ml. We're gonna divide by, by the time of minutes. So as per the care map, it states we're gonna give this over 10 minutes. And we're gonna multiply by drop factor per ml. So we are getting the b Braun IV sets eventually to match what the IRHA is using. Uh, but as of right now, we're still using Baxter IV sets. So the big thing you wanna keep in mind is that when we're calculating our drip rates, we need to know what set we're using. So on the trucks, we still have Baxter, so they're 10 drops per ml, uh, whereas the b Brons are 15. So just make sure you're doing math properly. So to calculate the drip rate, you take the total volume in ml. So for this case, it's 110. You divide it by the time of minutes, which in this case is 10 minutes, and then we're going to times it by the drip rate, which is 10 for the Baxter sets. So that means we want to do 110 drops per minute to infuse the whole medication over 10 minutes. 
So let's say we have a pediatric patient now. We're going to have to do a weight base. So we have an 88-pound child. So the medication profile states we have to give the medication dose as per kilograms. So to convert from pounds to kilograms, we're going to take 88 and divide it by 2.2, which gives us a 40-kilogram child. So to figure out the dose, it's 15 milligrams per kilogram. So we take our kilograms, so it's 40 kilograms times 15 milligrams. So we want to give a total dose of 600 milligrams. So some people can just do this math really quickly in their head of how many mLs we're going to give, but we need to figure out how much fluid we have. So there is a formula for that. So we're going to look at our dose desired, which is 600 milligrams. And then we're going to look at our dose on hand. So like I said before, we have 500 milligrams times how many mLs we have. So we have 5 mLs. So you can either use this as dose desire 600 with dose on hand is 100 per 1 mL, or you could do the 500 milligrams per 5 mL. It's up to you. So we, it basically breaks down to what we want over what we have and how many mLs. So we're going to do 600 divided by 500 times 5, and that gives us a dose of 6 mL. So we're going to drop 6 mLs of TXA to put into our saline bag. So I just did the math here. So when we look at here, just for different drip rates based on which tubing you're using. So again, we're still probably going to be using the Baxter, which is the drip factor of 10. So you have your total volume in ml, so 106 divided by the time in minutes, which is 10 times your drip factor of 10. So this one's going to be 106 drops per minute versus the adult dose so that was 110 drops per minute. And for here at the bottom, it also has the dosing for the back, uh, the bronze set as well. So again. As you can tell here, it's a big difference when you look at your drip factors, so you want to make sure you're doing math appropriately because you're going to get different results depending on which set you're using. So the next one medication we can infuse at this time using this technique is oxytocin. So indications for use of oxytocin uh, is that we're going to originally give them that first bolus, IM or IV, and then if there's still blood loss after delivery, we're going to continually give them an infusion. And like I mentioned before, you're going to have to make that decision if you want to start your oxytocin infusion versus give TXA, because we should not be giving, the same, um, giving them both at the same time if we only have one IV line. So with that, so contraindication using oxytocin is multiple gestations because that can cause issues for the baby that's not been delivered yet, and uterine burgeoning because oxytocin is going to cause a lot more pain, discomfort for mom, and a bigger increase in bleeding. So for dosing here, say have your initial bolus dose, so that's just a rapid push, so you got 10 units IVIM, and then for the infusion here, it's already figured out for you, so you want to give 10 units per hour over four hours. So we look at the notes here. It says to mix 40 units of oxytocin in one liter of normal saline and run at 250 mLs an hour. So to put this medication inside the bag, it'll be the same steps as I showed earlier in the presentation for TXA. You would drop your 40 units, which would be four mLs of the medication and inject it into the bag through the injection port and shake it up like I showed you earlier. So we don't have pumps on the truck yet. So as a pump is not available, it says to ensure a drip rate of 250 mLs an hour with a macro drip set adjusted to 42 drips per minute. So when we look at calculating the drip rate, so our total volume in mLs is 250 because we want to give, two, it says in the medication profile to give 250 mLs over 60 minutes. So that's going to be our time in minutes and we always do it in minutes. We don't do it in hours, things like that. So we're going to give 250 mLs over 60 minutes and we're going to multiply it by the drop factor per mL. So again, 10 drops for Baxter, 15 for the Bebron IV sets. So that'll come to 250. So volume in mLs over time in minutes, which is 60, times 10 for the Baxter sets. And so that means we're going to have 41.6 if you actually do it on your calculator, which rounds off to 42 drops per minute, which reflects exactly what it states in the care map there. So to set your drops per minutes, either for TXA or for oxytocin, it's important that you actually slow down your roller clamp, and you're going to have to manually visualize how many drops. How you want to do the math, if you want to watch it for a full minute, um, that's your choice. And then if you set it and you count the actual drips, you can do it like that, or you can do it for 10 seconds in the math. You can figure that out what works for you based on how critical your patient is. You may not have a minute to just stare at IV drips, but we still want to make sure we're not we're calculating the actual drip rate properly because like, especially with TXA, if we give it too fast, that's not going to be beneficial for our patient either. So we need to make sure we're doing accurate drops per minute by actually counting them. And that's medication infusion. So thank you very much for watching this presentation.